Today is time for the reveal of the Kyosho Turbo Scorpion. How did it assemble? How did the build go? Let's find out in this video. Hey guys, Rich here from the RCNetwork.com and today we do have the reveal of the Kyosho Turbo Scorpion. Of course, this is the 2017 re-release of the classic 1980s hit for a two-wheel drive, one-tenth scale buggy. So before we get into the actual Turbo Scorpion, let's go over some things that I needed to have to be able to assemble this classic from Kyosho. Being that the Turbo Scorpion from Kyosho is a kit version, no electronics come in the kit. So you will need to provide your own electronics and a couple other things to get this thing fully assembled and running. For electronics, I opted for a very budget-minded kit. This is the EP starter pack directly from Kyosho. So all of these items are tried and tested in some of their vintage rigs. It does include a 2.4 gigahertz synchro radio and receiver. It does have a 20 turn brushed motor and also a 45 amp ESC rated for that brushed motor. You do get a pretty decent servo and also a couple of adapters to get you started on day one whether you're running the old school Tamiya style plugs or a Dean's plug. Aside from the EP starter pack, you will have to provide your own battery. Now I chose a Gens Ace 5000 milliamp 2S LiPo. Came complete with a Dean's plug and I picked this up over at hobbybatteries.com. Although Kyosho does include a handy little starter pack of tools, I opted to use some ones here I had at the RC network. Starting with a 1.5, 2.0, and 2.5 millimeter hex driver and also a 5.5 and 7.0 nut driver set. Some supplemental tools that made the kit assembly go even easier are some needle nose pliers, some cut off shears to cut some of the parts off the trees, of course, a good sharp X-Acto knife, a body reamer to ream out some holes, especially if you're gonna run lighting system, and of course, some shock shaft pliers just to hold the shock shafts while you're assembling the shocks. The kit did come with all of the needed fluids for the assembly, including Kyosho thread lock, 25 weight shock oil, and of course, Kyosho's famous grease. Now, I did opt to go ahead and add to the build some Protec RC Premier Blue O-ring grease to lubricate the shock O-rings, and then also some chapstick here to lubricate the threads on the turnbuckles just to make it easier to thread on. Extra parts left over in the kit are all sorts of red shock parts, including an extra tool, which is pretty nice. Now we did have some extra shock pistons in different hole sizes to tune your suspension. Here are the included shock tools, which are pretty nice to use, especially when assembling those nice Optima shocks. You do get two additional servo horns for both 23 and 24. I found the 25 tooth to fit that included EP starter pack servo. Finally, you do get a couple of fake LED lights for the LEDs. Also some servo spacers here in case your servo happens to be a little bit taller can than usual. A couple of extra LED light items and then of course some extra hardware that was found in the kit. What's nice about Kyosho kits is they never forget about the aftermath of assembling a kit. And of course that means spare parts. Now inside the spare parts bag, you'll find all sorts of different little E-clips and C-clips and screws and nuts and body clips and also those coveted little seals for the shocks. Found those very handy on Optima build didn't have to use them on this build. The owner's manual was pretty well laid out. All of the illustrations were excellent and I didn't find any mistakes throughout the manual. Now with that, there are a lot of illustrations and not too much words written in this owner's manual. There is different languages, so keep in mind of that. Two of the most trickiest parts of this owner's manual was actually putting together the Optima shocks and also the orientation of all of the front suspension items. Now I do have a full build series, two 30 to 45 minute videos that goes over all the tricky parts that you can kind of check out for yourself. I'll have those down in the video description and you can follow along during those builds. Now for the Turbo Scorpion, just look at this thing. I mean, I went ahead and followed the box art as far as the all of the decals, uh, 
putting those on. I just painted the body with just a regular Sprint white color from Packtrip. Went on pretty easy and then just applying the decals adds all of the blue and the red and the yellow onto the vehicle and gives it that vintage look. Now what's so blatantly obvious on the Turbo Scorpion is just the scale features of it. This thing looks like the real one-to-one -one dirt buggies or dune buggies or whatever they're called these days, sand rails. Uh, it just looks cool and you've got to appreciate all of the details that went into this from Kyosho way back in the 1980s. The main features that differ the Turbo Scorpion versus the original Scorpion is the addition of 2.2 inch wheels. Now they added this basically to have a lower profile tire and thus gives you a little bit better performance on the track. Next, they also added a wider front track width. Yes, they actually widened the entire front track to make this thing a little bit more stable, especially in the turns. Now the next thing had to do with suspension. They added the Optima shocks. Yes, the red ones instead of the old silver ones we saw on the regular Scorpion. So they extended the actual perches that the springs go onto or the shocks and then also they ended up lengthening the rear trailing arms, so thus giving a wider track and a longer wheelbase. So basically they made this Turbo Scorpion the most stable two-wheel drive platform on the market. If you haven't seen the suspension on one of these vintage cars, it is quite different from what we have in modern day cars with traditional A-arms and turnbuckles. These have a whole trailing arm assembly on both the front and the rear. Now, if we watch the suspension movement, you'll see quite a bit and the wheels kind of go into almost a a, a severe camber movement there. So, uh, but overall the suspension works great. The rear suspension is pretty traditional with just a typical A pattern and it goes down quite nice and the suspension feels very smooth with still that same trailing arm technology. The transmission is quite nice and when I first put this together I was a little bit thrown off because there's no pinion adjustment or motor mesh to speak of. There are different spurs and pinions that you'd have to purchase separately, but I noticed later that inside of the extra parts kit, there's a smaller pinion and a larger spur gear. So simply switching those out will adjust your gear ratio. Now I did opt to mount the optional light kit that actually came inside of the kit, which was really nice. You didn't have to purchase it separately. So you get this little roll bar right here and four different lights. Now, no LED lights actually come in the kit. I purchased one separately from RC Mart. I believe I got it for just a few bucks. So got a four white LEDs and it also came with two reds that I've just kind of mounted on the underside of the body right here, just tucked in out of the way for now. But you have the option to mount these or not mount them. I mounted them because I want this thing to look pretty cool. The body is actually held on with just one body pin. It comes right up here on the hood. It protrudes through and you put a body pin on, but that's not where it stops. There's a couple of molded plastic pieces one right here on both sides of underneath the roof line, and then two back here. They go all the way back around the motor tube chassis. Looking inside the chassis, you can really see where that EP starter pack came in handy. Everything you see here came in it, including the servo, the receiver, the ESC, the switch which mounted to the ESC, and of course the motor in the far back here. Everything was pretty easy to lay out, and I followed the instructions to the T, almost exactly to what they said. On the underside is where you would change the battery. A simple body pin, pull that out, exposes the battery door, and you have your plug that comes straight into the battery compartment. Plug it in and you're pretty much set to go. Well guys, that is my quick reveal of the Kia Osho Turbo Scorpion. It was a pleasure to build this and it's really nice to see where RC has come from, the technology of the past and how it's kind of ramped up to today's technology and some of our state of the art two wheel drive buggies. Now with that, I've got to say this thing will be driven. I will probably only drive it once just for you guys. So stay tuned for that. Originally was not planning on driving this because this is vintage. This is something you put up on a shelf, you admire it, and you really like 
what Kyosho has done over the years. Well guys, stay tuned for that running video. That'll be coming out very shortly. Gonna have some great footage of this thing going around a small little dirt area because this is meant to drive in the dirt. You can tell by the pin tires, the rib fronts here. And with that, stay tuned for the next video on this Turbo Scorpion. Well guys, that is it for now. If you have any comments or questions about these items, feel free to post it on down below. And as always, thumbs up and subscribe. That's it for now guys, over and out.